Throughout our coverage of the Ohio 88 Conference this month, a consistent theme emerged. The traditional conflict between Democrats and Republicans has little to do with policy. And that's part of the problem. Believe it or not, I know progressive Republicans. And we got a whole lot of progressive independents. So this isn't about party. This is about issues. Activists and candidates we spoke to say contrary to conventional wisdom, progressive ideas have widespread appeal and that the key to change and winning elections was to make the ideas, not partisanship, the point. I think that uh, if we go out and appeal to people uh, throughout the districts, we can, we can convince people that we have a better plan with progressive policies that are going to help everyone. Medicare for all, living wages, and racial equality. During the convention, which was held to help progressive candidates mount successful campaigns, we spoke to one woman who has put this argument into practice. Her name is Tara Mosley Samples, and she is a Democratic councilwoman from Akron, Ohio. We caught up with her during the proceedings to discuss politics, the progressive movement, and how the leaders from both parties have misread last year's election. I wanted to know if you think that the progressive message can reach Trump voters and change their minds. I think it's already started reaching his voters. I, I think that what they thought they were getting with Mr. Trump is not what they're getting and so they're looking for someone who is who is speaking to their hearts and to their wants and to their needs and I think that they are already you know m moving more to the progressive side of things. Do you think that progressives should challenge and primary conservative Democrats and should they take the same strategy the Tea Party use to target moderate Republicans? I think everybody should have a primary if you're not doing your job. That's just my personal belief. It's, it's part of our democratic system people have the right to run and if you feel that you can do a better job and you think that your platform meets the wants and the needs of those constituents, I think everybody should have the opportunity to run. How is the progressive movement going to avoid the co-optive influence of campaign financing, which is often overwhelmingly controlled by the richest corporations and super PACs? Right. I think we are now entering a stage within our uh, voting system where they're putting people over money and over politics because they want people who are actually going to do the things that they say that they're going to do. Um, we've had millionaires run for office before and spend millions of dollars and not win seats. So it's been done. And I truly believe that eventually the people will outweigh the power of the, po of the, of the money. Absolutely. Do you think that Democrats should push for a single payer system now that the Obamacare repeal has failed? Absolutely. Yes. Simple. Yes. <laughs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. Black women have the highest voter turnout of all women and they consistently vote Democratic. What is this new progressive movement going to offer women and black women in particular? Well, my hope is that it will allow them to see that their voices matter and that their voices count and their vote matters and their vote counts. And to not just follow someone blindly just because of a party affiliation. Because just because someone's a Democrat or a Republican doesn't mean they speak to your wants and your need. And I think having this new progressive movement there, it will allow a lot of them to shift from there. Because you have a lot of women, African American women, who will say, oh no, I only vote Democrat. But then if you ask them, well why? Why are you supporting this candidate? And they'll say because they're a Democrat. And I think this will allow them to transition from them. I think this election cycle because of all the things that have happened and us watching our country unfold the way it has, I think it is allowing a lot of them to shift to being more independent and actually taking the time to actually look at the candidate and not at the party affiliation. There's a growing sentiment that the Democratic Party takes the black vote for granted. Some critics even say that Democrats have failed black voters in cities like Baltimore. What's your response to those critics? They do and they have. They have for quite a long time. And, you know, when you have a, a party, and I'm a Democrat, you know, and, but when you have a party that relies on the vote of the African American community, when the election cycle rolls around, and then they're gone again. At some point, we as the African American community have to wake up, stop being dated and then broken up with after November. You know, we, we have to do better than that. We have to demand some things. We should say, we want some things. We want some jobs. We want to know what are you going to do for us? You want us to come and vote for you. What are you going to do for us? Some say the problems facing our country are class issues, that it's based in unregulated capitalism. Others say it's a race issue. First and foremost, the exploitation is based in racial bias. What's your take? 
Absolutely, I think it's based on, based on race and class. Absolutely, and I think a lot of it has to do with because people are in these silos with one another, patting each other on the backs, and that good old boy network never helps. But racism in this country is something that no one ever wants to talk about until something really bad happens, and we talk about it for a hot second, and then it goes away, and then we go back on to our everyday life. But until racism in our country is, is, is tackled and having an honest dialogue and conversation and a plan of how we are going to address it, it's going to continue. Will racism ever go away completely? No. Absolutely not. I, I mean, we have to be honest with ourselves as it relates to that. But when you have a system built on, you win these seats because of minorities. But it's the very same minorities that you won't even speak up for or defend or do things for. We have some issues that we need to address and some things that need to be changed. Do you think there's a new groundswell of progressivism? Do you think that there really is a change happening? Oh, absolutely. And and this is just piggybacking off of the People's Summit. And, and just to uh, watch, uh, you know, Senator Sanders name of all these individuals who were part of the revolution, people who are, who are progressives, who are grassroots people, who have won seats. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a revolution. It is, I think it's going to take over and come 2020, you're gonna see a lot of, of Bernie Kratz, Nina Kratz, sitting in these seats, absolutely. So what do you think about the idea of a Turner Sanders or Sanders Turner ticket? Either way, I'm good with it. <laughs> Either way, absolutely, all for it. This is Taya Graham and Stephen Janis for the Real News Network reporting from Deer Creek, Ohio.